would you welcome into the blue corner, Petro Gitmer! Very exciting young K1 fighter, and he'll be the slightly taller of the two men against Petro Getman here. Getman with a very powerful stance. He likes to load up the punches, keeps the guard nice and high. There we go, the left hook right hand combination. But what he does brilliantly after he lands, he immediately moves Malcolm. Yes, and a beautiful inside leg kick as well. You're right, a dangerous man. And I always say, as you know, Dean, we've worked together many times against a taller opponent, all the way in or all the way out. And Getman's showing you that. He does his work, then he's right back out of range. He's going to get a warning here, potentially for the knee, either the low or the high. He's just got to make sure he targets that. And again, that solid inside leg kick. And as we said, Matt Scanlon's an exciting young fire fighter, but he's just second best at the moment in terms of timing here. Look at Getman, the way... He looks for that opportunity, and there's the slipping. But that's better from Scanlon, Dean. Yeah, Scanlon's got a very tenacious style. But he likes to be comfortable with his distance. If he can't maintain that, he gets a little bit flustered and sometimes takes away his reach, uh, reach advantage and comes forward a little bit too close. So there we go. That's what we need from him. Long range shots, move off the center line. Don't allow Getman to... Oh, what a kick! Getman took it like it didn't happen, but that was beautiful from Scanlon. And that's what he's got to do at that range, be unorthodox. As long as he's got a oh, big overhand right from Getman. And another impressive opening round with non-stop action here. And we said resurrection. Well, this is the resurrection of Lion Fighting Championships with some superb bouts already under a third of the way into this. And these two men already putting on a show in the opening round. Scanlon now found his distance, found his range. Look how much more comfortable he is. Look how much better he evades the counter shots from Getman. And again, if he's going to continue doing that, circle like he is, sidekick, circle. Don't go back in a straight line to allow Getman to close that gap. Now, for me, that was a round of two half steam. So round two starts and you see right above our commentary position the height difference and you get the feeling that given the close range, Getman's right hand carries real power, Dean. Yeah, I'd like to see Getman try and catch some of those kicks and use that to cover some distance, get close to his opponent and land those shots. He's windmilling him in a bit uh, too, too far out. There's no power in those punches. He needs to get close, plant his feet and give him the power. Well, as we, as we mentioned between rounds, the problem for him is... He sees the target directly in front of him and he's attacking the target directly. So Scanlon, that would be a comfort zone for him. He knows exactly where he is Look, coming in here. Start to shuffle, start to come to the side, start to give him some options, make him think. Because when he comes in, Getman comes in straight like that. And if he gets the timing right, Scanlon can keep him at range the whole bout. And Getman, as you said, Dean, now it's about targeting and range. He risks when he steps in like that. That's when Scanlon's got a counter, when he steps in with that rear leg. Getman landing some nice left hooks here, eats a leg kick. He's got to be more offensive like this, and he's got to move off the centre of the cage. Big knee from Scanlon, the crowd reacts, Malcolm. Well, yes, because as I said for Scanlon, he knows exactly where Getman is now. The shorter opponent, the other thing Getman hasn't done as well as he did in the first was, I love the way he'd change up gears and suddenly be in your face. We were amazed by the speed he closed the distance in the opening round. He's been more methodical in the second here, and it doesn't suit him. 
even into that clinch, Dean, you, you can almost see the brain working. Whereas in the first round, I was impressed with the speed he got in. And you, you can hear the corner of Getman, a slip there from Scanlon, but you can hear the corner shout, the vibe means go. They want him to go. They want him to put the pressure on Scanlon, but use combinations, keep the hands up. Don't drop the hands and allow Scanlon. So they touch gloves and immediately the kick on the right hand from Scanlon. And oh, there you go. With the, Listen to the crowd respond to that. Oy. Oh, Sam Amidi telling them both the break, getting carried away here. And so are the crowd, Dean. It's a great atmosphere here today. The crowd love it. They love it. Oh, no, he's going to take a point off because he didn't break. Unfortunate for Get Getman. You know, if, if there was an argument that he needed this round potentially, he's got to look for a finish now. Oh, he's really got to go for it, Dean. And I think this goes back to the first round when Sam Amidi warned him there. And Getman may have forgotten, but Sam didn't. And his corners, as you said, really shouting at him now. He, there, he needs to get in. He needs those big right hands. He needs to get that explosiveness of the first round back. Get man now again dropping the left hand, looking for that left hook quite wide on. He, he loads up as well. Oh, that knee! Beautifully timed. That is it. He's curled up. Fetal position, Dean. That is going to be over. But you, you know, we said the explosiveness had left him, left him quite predictable. The time he had to throw that knee, Scanlon, and he threw it right into the midsection. It's all over. Get man. Ladies and gentlemen, what a bout. Let's hear it for both your warriors in the day. But we do have your winner in one minute 25 of the third and final round. The record of the match.